Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk, where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about distal tapers and taper tangs and how to do them. And also, what I think is the most important attachment for your 2x72, the one you should think about getting first, the surface grinding attachment. Let's go check it out. Okay, I pulled this knife from my kitchen. Uh, this is my personal chef knife, and uh, it has both a distal taper and a tapered tang. So we're gonna use this for a discussion. So first, the distal taper. So that's gonna be a taper from the ricasso to the tip, and it's usually for weight reduction so that you get a nice finer edge uh, and you just lose a bunch of weight. For a knife like this, like a chef knife and most knives, the distal taper is gonna happen naturally. It's not something you need to do to the blade. When you grind your bevels, you're typically gonna be grinding more from the front of the blade, and that's just gonna happen naturally, okay? Um, but for longer blades, like some swords, uh, where you have a very narrow bevel and a really long blade, um, for katanas, for example, they will taper from about whatever, sometimes 300 thousandths of an inch, all the way to maybe a quarter inch, or sorry, an eighth of an inch at the tip. So they do taper, and you need to usually put that in uh, purposefully. Same with the tapered tang. That's something you definitely need to put in purposefully. And um, what I'll do is uh, taper this on both sides before I do the handle scales. So let's talk about each of those and how we do those, which is with... The surface grinding attachment. What we have here is the uh, Rolls Royce of surface grinding attachments. This one is from Ameribraid. Uh, probably the best one on the market that I know of. Uh, just really, really super solid. Has switchable magnets, um, which uh, I'll talk about in a little bit. But generally, the reason I think the surface grinding attachment is the most important attachment is because the first thing you need to do is start your knives getting them flat. Uh, that's just super important, getting them constant thickness down the length. And this will just speed that up and make this just a much easier job. So the, uh, the one from Ameribrate has a three inch wide wheel, which is very cool. Um, you put your blade after you've done forging, if you're gonna forge it or just stock removal, you're gonna put it on here, turn the magnets on, run this, so I've got this set in horizontal right now, it's just easier. And then you're just gonna run this back and forth, you know, set this up, go forward or back. The Ameribraid one has a, uh, a dial, which is awesome. So you know exactly how far uh, you're going, which is very cool if you have to take the same amount off on both sides. Really, really great attachment. One of the cool features of this attachment is the tapering feature. If we take this bolt out, we can actually move this part, this end of the attachment closer to the belt, which will taper it. So that way, if we're gonna start our tapering, we'll put it on here and then gently start our taper. You're always gonna be hitting the back here first because it goes forward. So you're gonna be starting there and moving forward, meaning take a little bit off the back and then keep going until you get it where you want. So if I was going to do a distal taper on a knife like this, um, again, I would normally do it just by grinding, but let's just for sake of argument say I was doing a very shallow bevel for some reason, and I wasn't going up to the spine, I need to taper this spine. I would put this on and then uh, I would go up to before my handle, okay? So I would want it to end pretty close to here. You wouldn't want to go too far back because you don't want that taper to go in the front of your handle because if you do, uh, your handle scales will start to pop here uh, because of the different angle. This is where you need to measure this angle and how far out this went. Okay, you're going to do one side and then you're going to flip it over and then push this out again the same amount. So if it went, say, ten thousandths of an inch out and you did this taper on one side, you're going to need to flip it over and go another ten thou, because remember it's lying on that bevel and 
it's a total of 20, 10 on one side, 10 on the other. So remember, you have to change this again for each. You have to add each side when you do this. And that's also important on the uh, tapered tank. And incidentally, if you're actually doing something that's really long, first of all, you can take this guard off. Uh, this is just a spark guard to make sure the sparks aren't flying off the end. But I've actually had to do katanas before. Just make sure you do the front of the katana first uh, and get it down to the taper you want, the front of your long item, and then do the back half so that it meets up with the back taper on the front half if that makes sense. Because if you try to do the back half first and then try to meet the front, you might have it too narrow at the front. So do the front first. So do like the front half and then do the back half and get them to meet in the center. If you guys need anything for knife making, remember to check out our sponsor, Maritime Knife Supply. They got everything you need, steel, abrasives, tooling, supplies, you name it, they got it. So just a little more about tapering with this attachment. You just loosen both of these bolts and uh, it will slide back and forth. They even give you a good little cheat here that tells you uh, for every 175 thousandth of an inch, it's one degree off of B. Okay, so remember, if your blade is this long, then you can do it by either the shim height and or if you know the degree that you want uh, the taper to be. Um, and usually I'll use calipers here to just measure this and make sure that I go the same distance um, again for the next side. And just a bit more about the Ameribraid uh, surface grinding attachment. Uh, it does have these uh, switchable magnets, so you don't have to uh, kind of pull your knife off of the uh, surface. You can just turn the magnets off and uh, it doesn't scratch up your blade, so that's great. Uh, a downside of the switchable magnets, uh, one of the things I use the surface grinding attachment for quite a bit is to take the mill scale off my Damascus. And I actually find these uh, just a little cumbersome because so I gotta turn them both on, put the steel on, turn them both off, get the steel off. And I'm doing usually 30, 40 pieces and that takes a while. So sometimes I prefer the permanent magnet. And this, uh, this attachment, and like I said, I consider this kind of the Rolls Royce of surface grinding attachments. This one is about $1,200. Uh, if you're more of a DIY guy and you want to build it yourself, let's look at another option. So this is my homemade surface grinding attachment. Um, I have a video. Uh, I'll put a link up in the corner if you want to uh, learn how to build one of these yourself. Uh, they are not hard to build and cost around... 400, 450 uh, to make one of these. Uh, this one has a permanent magnetic chuck, which I actually prefer for taking the mill scale off Damascus because I just slap it on here, do this, pull it off, do the next one, and it's just a bit quicker. Uh, obviously for knives, uh, since this is permanent, you have to smack them on here and pry them off. So not as much fun for that. It does have the same tapering feature. Uh, you see there's a channel here. You just take the middle bolt out and uh, loosen this one and uh, you can push this forward and taper just like the other one. So a little more economical uh, approach if you, uh, you, know, you don't need all the bells and whistles and you're willing to uh, build it yourself. So let's talk a little more about the tapered tang because that one can be a little tricky. So, like I said, you're going to start on one side, start from the kind of the back where it's touching, and taper all the way uh, past where you, your handle is going to start. That's important. Uh, your handle can't start, you know, that taper can't be uh, inside your handle or else uh, it'll pop the scale. Uh, so, usually what I do for this is um, I will kind of eyeball it a little bit or, or, or set it and then do the back and then do the other side. I'm kind of working into this on one side uh, and I'm marking this. I'll mark the center line so that I know how far I'm getting to the center and then kind of adjust. And once you get one side, you can just measure how far you went and then double that when you do the other side. So that's all well and good, but the toughest part of uh, the taper tang is actually uh, drilling the pinholes because you can't just stack your scales on top and drill the pinhole because then your pins are slightly at an angle 
and uh, your pins will not go in. Uh, so that part is a little challenge. I'll explain what you're going to need to do there. So let's talk about how you're going to drill the pin holes with a tapered tang. Uh, let's just pretend that this tang has been tapered. I've got one, two, three blocks and I've got a piece of sacrificial wood so I don't blow through. Uh, the holes don't blow through. This is always a good idea no matter what. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my handle material down first, put the knife on it, but remember this is going to be tapered. So if I just drill through now, uh, there's going to be a very slight angle on these, uh, which will not match the angle on the other side. So you'll have a really hard time getting the pin through. So what we do is the amount that we tapered, we're going to shim it that amount. So if I'm using this much, that's how much my taper would be on one side. I would just put it under here, clamp here, clamp here, drill and drill. And if I pop this up, that gap is should represent half of the taper. Okay, so then you're going to drill this and then all you're going to do is then take that scale, put your other scale on, flip the knife over and then do the same thing. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. That's the way to get uh, properly drilled pinholes for your tapered tang. Hopefully this video was useful for you in tapered tangs and distal tapers. Get yourself a surface grinding attachment or go build one. Thanks folks. We'll see you on the next one.